When we returned to this holy ground last month, I was absolutely convinced that the dimensions of the room had changed, that the actual interior architecture was different. I remembered the stage being very high off the ground, a frightening climb up an Everest of defenselessness and exposure. In the old days, I needed assistance mounting the stage high up in Alpine Housatonic. It had a Victorian damsel in distress quality, the way I extended my hand to Frank, sometimes to Ted, to help me up on the stage. In the dizzying moment after I read, I would need a helping hand to dismount and return to the safety of the ground level where people were reacting to whatever I had read. It was a double V moment, a moment of maximum vertigo and vulnerability. Suddenly, last month, the stage was only modestly elevated. I no longer felt like I was teetering high above the crowd. It reminded me of the disorienting optical illusion of returning to grade school for a visit as an adult. The oak desks, complete with ink wells and wrought iron frames bolted to the floor, were so tiny, child-sized. The classrooms and hallways were proportionately designed for children learning that I before E thing. In adult reality, nothing about school seemed quite so imposing. I was a passably confident grown-up, wandering as a tourist in childhood, just as I'm returning tonight to this art space as an experienced reader. Neither the stakes nor the stage are as high as I remember. I grew up as a writer on this stage. Brechit, in the beginning, every month would be a contest between my comedy routine, a brittle, rapid-fire slice of cleverness out of Fran Leibowitz with an edge of the nasty, and my seeking philosophical song and dance dripping with meaning. <laughs> One month, I'd come on like a popcorn machine bombarding the audience with words. The next month, I'd whistle harmlessly a tea kettle on simmer. If I took the stand-up route, I'd be afraid the audience that's you, my friends, would think I was shallow and just a wee bit aggressive. If I went, the contemplative, went contemplative at the fork, I ran the risk of sounding maudlin and self-important. Why does she always talk about death? What's wrong with her, I imagined? What's her problem? I'm pleased to report that I figured out a way that I couldn't possibly win. Whichever direction I followed, there were demons lying in wait. I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out who I was. This all changed right here, over time, over the years of risky business. There was no great awakening, no eye-wow conversion experience with uncontrollable shaking and speaking in tongues where I saw the light. It was a soft, a slow softening, a gradual opening of the heart as I learned to accept and appreciate all the offerings of this communion, even my own. There's a story the Hasidim tell about Reb Zusha. So Reb Zusha was lying on his deathbed, still talking about death all the time, <laughs> surrounded by his disciples. He was crying and nobody could comfort him. One student asked his Rebbe, why do you cry? You were almost as wise as Moses and as kind as Abraham. Reb Zusha answered, when I pass from this world and appear before the heavenly tribunal, they won't ask me Zusha, 
Why weren't you as wise as Moses or as kind as Abraham? Rather, they will ask me, Zusha, why weren't you Zusha? Why didn't I fulfill my potential? Why didn't I follow the path that could have been mine? Iowa has been a way station on the path. In this building, I learned to outgrow my childlike smallness and frailty. I drank my milk and grew big and strong, but not so big that I took up more than my share of space and not so strong that my voice drowned out the remarkable voices of my IWOW compatriots. I learned to introduce comedy to tragedy and watch them skipping hand in hand down Front Street, sometimes joined by their shy little friend, sentimentality, reciting, reciting nursery rhymes and singing dirges. And this is not an optical illusion. This is as real as it gets. I can tell you that I will carry you with me on my back and in my belly on my way out this door, and I will not forget. <laughs>